Okay, in this video, we're gonna discuss leaders. A leader counter is one that represents just a single man, and you're going to get it either from a result from the chaos table or from your order of battle in your scenario booklet. As an example, I've got the leader, Lieutenant Schocke here, and he set out with one of the German infantry platoons. One of the differences between leaders and HQs is the leaders are going to be assigned to and remain with one platoon for the entire battle itself, either until they die or the scenario ends. When you're looking at the leader's counter, they have a couple of numbers at the bottom of it. The bottom left number is the leader's morale value, and the number to the right of that is their leadership value. One of the bonuses of having a leader is that the platoon that they're attached to can use the leader's morale to conduct their morale checks instead of their HQ's morale. Looking at our example here of Lieutenant Shockey, we can see his morale value is an eight, but the HQ's morale value is a six. So it does behoove the infantry platoon to use Lieutenant Shockey instead of their natural HQ. Also, whenever they conduct any of their attacks, they get to add the leader's leadership modifier just like they would if it were an HQ unit as a bonus towards their attacks. A platoon that has a leader is also always going to be considered in command, so even if this infantry platoon got out of range of their HQ, they would still be considered in command because they have a leader with them. Now, obviously, if the platoon dies and is fully eliminated, the leader is going to die because they can't operate on their own, but if the platoon is reduced, that's when you're going to take and roll a 1d6, and on a result of a 1, that's when the leader is going to die as well. 